Hey guys, Zaryu you here and today I'm gonna be walking through some of your guys' gameplay that you sent in over on Instagram and Twitter I asked you guys if you had some gameplay that you wanted me to check out and review You can send it to me email it to me and we'll have it here on the channel for you guys to check out We're gonna see what you did well what maybe you could have done better all of those types of things So thank you guys for sending in the gameplay if you guys want to send in more gameplay my email is on my Twitter uh, my Instagram the website any you can find the email all right somewhere down below send me in your gameplay I would love to take a look at it and next I want to say thank you to whoop for sponsoring this video And I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, come on czar a sponsor. What's going on guys? I've been doing YouTube for six or seven years. All right. I pretty much have never really done a sponsor You know why because I don't like sponsored videos a lot of the time, but Whoop is freaking awesome. I I was going to reach out to Whoop before the sponsorship even happened because I just liked the product. So when they reached out to me, I was like, oh man, this is pretty awesome. All right. So links down below if you want to check it out. It's a Whoop band. It's what I'm wearing on my wrist. All right. It monitors your mental strain, your physical strain, so you can keep an eye on your health, your fitness, while you're gaming, while you're training, all of that stuff. It'll track your resting heart rate, your sleep, your activity levels, your, your HRV, your heart rate variability, your well being. You can see if you're getting sick or if you're ready to strain and perform really, really hard. So I find it fascinating. If you guys find it fascinating, find the link down below in the description. You can get 15% off with code Zaryu. And there it is. But let's jump into this video, guys. I'm really excited to check out some of your guys' gameplay. Um, bada bing, bada full screen, boom. Full screen. Boom, there's full screen. All right. So the first person that sent in gameplay today, his name is Zar Bad. Unbelievable. Let's get into it. <laughs> Kade, actually, no. So he emailed me um, some, of, some of these clips, right? I, I collected these all through email um, via social media. And um, the guy emailed me and he was like, yo, I'm a huge fan, all right? I wanted to send you a gameplay so you could take a look. Don't mind my name. And I was like, I wonder what his name is. I guess we now know it's Zar Bad, all right? He says he's a huge fan though. By the way, I just got a haircut. What are you guys thinking? What are you guys thinking of the haircut? Ugh. Feeling good, feeling fresh, hopping into this game. Looks like he's playing here with a Holy Paladin. Playing Holy Paladin, Fire Mage, fighting Rogue Mage, Sub Fire Mage. Okay, so in this matchup, guys, as the Mage, okay, Mage, Holy Paladin, you are advantaged against the Rogue Mage. So the healer team has the advantage against the Rogue Mage a lot of the time. So let's hop into this. It starts in a couple seconds. What am I thinking right away? Um, you want to mount up you want to start mounted and you want to start with blazing barrier on so I'm just gonna go through every single thing I see right everything that I would do different in this clip is what I'm gonna be breaking down here today All right blazing barrier mount up chill for a second. All right You want to target the mage if the mage is you target the mage and see if he's in stealth now If the mage is in stealth you can go stealth you want to go stealth after their mage if possible Okay, so I would target the mage and go in stealth if the mage is going stealth like you don't want to get sapped Okay, so the mage is going stealth and you get sapped. So this is automatically what you don't want to happen, okay? Now the mage can cast a greater pyroblast onto you. So what you want to do is target the mage, stay back. When the mage is going invis, you go invis, all right? If you get sapped, it's not the end of the world. Like, it's not like you have lost at this point, but it's not the ideal opener. The positioning also isn't ideal because you're not near a pillar. So I, if you're going to get sapped, I would say get sapped like here. Reason being is once they open with kidney shot, you can shrink at the kidney shot and line of sight the mage by running around the pillar. Since you're in the open, it's going to be harder to line. Also, you're, you're pretty far from your paladin, so if you get smoke bombed, you're going to take a lot of damage. So lots of things. Like, like you guys might think um, a game 10 seconds in, there's not much to say. It's like, oh, you know, well, he hasn't even pr pressed a button yet, right? But based on his positioning and based on, um, on the start of this game, I can already tell... This is not looking good, all right? This is looking bad. This is looking czar bad. All right, let's continue the game. Mage is coming in. He's probably going to cast a greater pyro. Let's see what ends up happening. If they open up the smoke bomb, you're far from your pally, so I'm a bit nervous. Let's see what happens. Pally gets sapped, actually. And so the, the rogue mage actually messed up their, their opener. Polymorph comes out on you. One of the things I could say here is... The mage casting poly, like I have counterspell one, two, three macros, right? So right 
here, I'd counterspell the mage, right? Counterspell mage here destroys their opener. What you do is you counterspell the mage, it puts you combat, you can't get sapped, and you sheep the mage, your pally's fine, right? They want to go your pally right now, and you know that because they sapped your pally. How do you counter it? You counterspell that poly, okay? And you sheep the mage. Or you could dragon's breath sheep the mage if you wanted, right? Or if you miss the counter spell on the poly, say he fate cast it, you could um, DB sheep. And then you force out the... You peel for your paladin so he doesn't have to use too much here, right? Anyway, you get sheep, the greater pyroblast goes off. You have to stop the sheep by. If that even means like, say you didn't hit the counter spell, if that means trinket counter spelling, the poly, you you, you kind of have to do that. The, the sheep by hitting your poly is bad. It's a sheep by is actually on use. This rogue mage is completely botching their opener. Since they staffed the poly, they should have went poly. So since the rogue mage goes to you, okay, so now we're back on an even playing field. This isn't that bad. Your poly's out of the sap. We're looking good once again. I love that line of sight. Okay, I would probably pop temp shield right now because it looks as if the rogue is going to open up onto you, right? So I'd pop temp shield like right now, right before the rogue opens. Um, let's see what ends up happening. There's a combustion. The rogue's babysitting your pally and you're getting 1v1 by the mage. I would spell steal that combustion and pop temp shield. Like spell steal and temp would be my next two globals. You're casting scorch. Scorch, do not use scorch if you're above, if they're above 30% life, right? You only want to use scorch if they're 30 or lower. And sometimes if you have combustion up with no more fire blast. But scorching someone at 80%, not the place. So just never scorch. Also, you're not trying to kill the mage right now. What are you trying to do? You're trying to live. So spell stealing that combustion, popping the temp shield, use that defensive to live once you're fine, once your pally's out of CC, then you go offensive, right? So if your pally's in CC, you're doing things to live. When your pally's out of CC, that's when you go offensive, all right? So there's a lot of different things at play here. So let's see what ends up happening. Rogue opens up. You didn't pre-temp shield. Now that you're in the smoke bomb, trinket temp and blink absolutely needs to happen here or else they're going to force an ice block. Um, you don't trinket temp. Your pally runs in. You blink out. Um, let's see if your pally can get... So your pally, it looks like he sacks and wings you. So you, I mean, you save your trinket, your temp, your block, your caught. So you still have every cooldown. You should be chilling. See what ends up happening here. You got a little vision chasing you, which sucks. You're just casting Scorch. So basically, don't cast Scorch. Like, don't cast Scorch. Spell Seal, Fire Blast, um, uh, Dragon's Breath, Sheep the Rogue. Um, you could throw the Meteor down. You can do an early Combust. You can throw out Reaping Flames. Um, I don't know if you're actually Reaping, but Reaping is one of those things that's going to light up the Mage. I'm trying to see if you're Reaping. I don't see it... Oh, your concentrated flame looks like. Okay, and you already used your flame sack, so that's good. If you can go reaping, I think it's a little bit better. See, seeing this rogue with that frost snow is fantastic. I think going for the dragon's breast sheep under the rogue as well would be a really, really good play. Um, line of sighting or, or stopping this is cheap high in, in some capacity is, is definitely definitely a solid choice as well. Um, looks like the mage wants to sheep your paladin. Paladin, hammer of justice, the rogue. That's fantastic. And it looks like you're doing okay right now. I would probably... Ooh! Sheeping the mage back to full... When your pally's out of CC is, like, th this game looked great. The mage was 40% life. The mage is almost dead, and then you sheep him back to full life. That is going to hurt. So, yeah, that's maybe the biggest mistake. Now now he's back to full life. He blocks the G pie. This is a little sketch. Greater Pyroblast, I would counterspell that fantastic counterspell. You blink. Don't get too much distance there. The rogue reconnects. Now you're going rogue. So it... If the mage is there and you've already committed mage and the mage already blocked, I would just commit to mage. However, going rogue's fine. If rogue has no cloak, um, I would pop combust and kill him, right? So the fact that there's been no combust used when the rogue has no cloak, mage has no block, like this is your time. Like you can kill. Pally's out of CC. Like you're, you're good to go here. Greater Pyroblast being casted. I would definitely like blink or line or DB or like something. You eat the Greater Pyroblast and the Cauterize comes out and you block. Rogues in the ring. Don't let the rogue get a re-stealth. That'd be bad if he does, so he gets the re. So just a couple couple things going on here. You know, a couple things going on here. So rogue gets the re. Rogue reopens up. Um they sheep your paladin. They break the sheep. It looks like they can maybe just take out your paladin. I would I would probably sheep the mage here. Um he's on quarter DR. The rogue. Yeah, looks like the rogue's gonna live. So you, you almost take out the rogue, or you maybe you take out the rogue here. Let's see. I'll wait for the clip to finish. Meteor's down. You blink. You almost take out the rogue. Looks like he line of sights, and that's probably GG now. Okay. Okay. 
So, just to, uh, to recap this game, it's not a bad game. I think um, sheeping the mage back to full when he was already 40% life was probably the biggest mistake. Positioning could have been better, just line of sight in that opener like we talked about. I think not using combustion until your pally's dead was maybe actually the biggest mistake. Uh, maybe even more so than sheeping the mage. If that rogue cloaks and you have combust, you won the game. All you have to do is combust the rogue and he's dead. Um, similarly, if the mage blocks and you still have combust, you also won the game. All you have to do is combust and he's dead. All right, so just not using that combust until a little bit too late. And then, uh, you know, I, I, in a smoke bomb, I probably would just trinket temp and blink out. So your pally doesn't have to use anything. Um, yeah, I mean, a couple things. Game wasn't terrible. Uh, I did see some nice counter spells, some nice line of sight. Um, the damage there at the end, that burst was great. I think generally saving Scorches for when they're under 30% is a good idea as well. But yeah, the game looked good all around. But yeah, I think I think fixing um, some of the, like tightening some of these uh, screws, is that, is, that a, is that a saying? In these weak areas, you'll definitely be winning that next time. All right, let's hop into another game from a viewer uh, game that they sent in. So this game is from Jambone. He sent it in. Uh, looks looks like my webcam. Actually, let me just let me just. Oh, nice. What is on? What is on? What is on your head, Jambone? I have no idea what's going on there. <laughs> I'll try to like. Uh, okay, and there we are. The czar. All right. So here we are, guys. Um, we're fighting Feral, Druid, Resto, Shaman, and. The sap comes out on the shaman, feral opens up. So the sap on the shaman, I, I would say don't sap shaman until feral opens up. In this case, it didn't hurt you guys because you got the sap as the feral opened up, but just keep that in mind. I wouldn't really sap shaman until feral opens, right? When the feral opens, you cheap shot shaman um, into a polymorph and you kidney shot the feral is, is generally the play here. Looks like you're playing fire mage as a rogue and we want that mark for death kidney on the feral true would instantly, let's see if it happens. Mm, he gets the wall off, you mark for death kidney, that's fine. Um, Feral Trinkets in the opener. So now you just line of sight and wait till next go. It looks like you're doing that. That's fantastic. I think you have a Blazing Barrier up. You have it up in two seconds. Looks like you're sitting down to eat. Blazing Barrier's up. You use it. That's perfect. This is just hard. Um, this is a hard game because you're half HP and you haven't really done anything wrong at this point. Um, it's just it's a hard matchup. Straight up. Your Rogue gets the cheap shot onto the Shaman. Probably not the best play here because there's still eight seconds of poly there on the Feral Stealth. So if I was your Rogue, I just probably wouldn't have opened yet. But let's see what ends up happening. Um, you pre temp shield the opener. Beautiful. Thorns his out. See if you can spell seal. Um, it looks like you're going for the blind onto the true. Looks like you're going Shaman. So, hmm. Would I have done this? Probably not. I probably would have blinded the Shaman, got the Trinket, sheep the Trinket, killed the Feral on a Market of Kidney with Vendetta. Probably what I would have done. Um, is this a bad thing? Maybe not. It's just a different perspective, I guess. So blinding the druid with no trinket into a sap and going shaman could work here. A shaman souls wall trinket link. I just don't think you're going to kill him per se, but you never know. You still have combustion. You still have a lot of damage. You still have claw. So it looks like you're popping a lot of your damage. There's combustion, claw, combust, like meteor, everything. Shaman pops vitality, taking so much damage, popping a sentence as well. Shaman's just getting annihilated half kidney comes out he trinkets so that's a nice value trinket there he's getting a couple healing surges looks like you're still training him spirit link comes out you avoid it feral true is out now little sketchy but you guys could definitely still take out the shaman at this point you try to avoid the bike of the blinks that's awesome shaman is getting low if you kick him or something there he just dies nice and then you go into the block so looks like you guys win this game um i think there was some games where you sent in where you won some games you sent in where you lost this is looking pretty okay. Um, the main thing I would say, like I, I liked this whole game. I, the main thing I would say is just sometimes the shaman in that situation is definitely not going to die at higher ratings. So if you want to keep pushing, it might be more consistent to open on the feral, get the trinket, next go blind the shaman, force the trinket with the blind, and then cheap shot, like vanish, cheap shot, mark for death, Kenny Feral, sheep on that cheap shot, kill the Feral 100 to 0 with the combust, with the with the vendetta. Now, why is this a little more fail proof? Because the Feral won't be able to live with no trinket if you vendetta combust him. You'll just win right there. And if the shaman trinket is blind, it's GG. Now, the only way this was wouldn't work is if the shaman sat the blind. But if the shaman sits the blind, you hit the Feral anyway, you pop vendetta, maybe hold combust, but pop vendetta. 
and then you get the shaman to shrink it blind you cc him through and then you pop combust and kill anyway so it's just safer the strat that i would usually do is just a bit safer um this worked though i don't think anything in this game was like absolutely terrible i like the positioning i like the usage of blazing barrier temp shield i like the usage of combust um yeah the, wh the whole game the whole game looked pretty solid so let's just let this finish out <laughs> assuming you won can you imagine the feral 1v2s him after all that and they lose no <laughs> i have no idea what's going on here and then also full pig cost 20 don't understand what's going on here with the pig costume but those are some ggs all around Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, all right? If you did not enjoy the video, make sure to hit the thumbs down button, all right? Thank you guys for sending in your gameplay and letting me take a peep, letting me take a look-see, all right? It's, it's good for me to learn. I think if you guys enjoyed this, let me know down below in the comments if you guys learned anything from these videos. Sometimes it's good to let, take a look at different MMRs um, besides just like 3K rated players or like, um, you know, whatever, it's good to look at all different levels and see what could this person have done better? What, what did they do really well? But, you know, all of these different things. If you guys enjoyed the video in any sense, definitely let me know down below in the comments. And thank you again to Whoop for sponsoring this video. It's super, super awesome that they're supporting the channel, uh, supporting me. So thank you to Whoop. Use the link down below if you do want to check them out further. And besides that, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.